This is City Talk. I'm Eric Schmidt. Thank you for tuning in. Since late March of last year, 2020, life in Washington County and its cities has changed rather dramatically. Oregon cities have borne the brunt of many of the pandemic restrictions, all the while having to provide vital public services for a nervous population, sometimes people in desperate need of those public services. On this edition of City Talk, we are pleased to welcome the mayor of Forest Grove, Oregon, the Honorable Pete Truax. Mayor Truax, thank you for being with us. We really appreciate it. I have to add that you and I are back in the TVC TV studios for the first time in over a year, but we are socially distanced and observant of the space requirements. Nonetheless, it is really good to see you in person. Sir. Nice to be here. Having said all that, let's take a look back. How has and how did the coronavirus pandemic impact the city of Forest Grove, Oregon? Well, if we go back to March of 2020, I had just returned from Washington, D.C. and a conference with the National League of Cities, and I got the idea that something was, uh, something was up when we were on the plane and there was, it was half full. Uh, and that has never happened on a nonstop flight from from Washington, from National Airport to to Portland uh, in all the years that I've been making that trip. Uh, and then the other thing, the night that we did come back, uh, I was in the in the lobby at uh, at National and waiting to get on the plane and got the word that the National Basketball Association had suspended play. And that uh, obviously was a, a clue that this was this to me it was going to be bigger than uh, I ever thought it might be. So um, from from March of 2020 until till today, we've been tr dealing with uh, the situation almost on a day-to-day -day basis. That uh, it seemed like for the first three or four months, every day presented a new problem. Uh, presented a new issue, presented a new barrier that we had to deal with, not only as the city, but also in Washington County, uh, indeed across uh, across this great state and uh, around this country. So uh, trying to be nimble at, uh, on this has been a, been a difficult task, and uh, my job description has changed considerably in the year since, since that plane flight back from Washington. We'll talk about that in a minute, but let's talk about the city services that you provide. Has there been an appreciable change in the way they're delivered now because of the COVID? We've been fairly lucky in Forest Grove. The services are still being provided. Um, we have our own power company, which uh, I am always uh, fond of talking about Forest Grove Light and Power. We are able to uh, provide services. In fact, we have improved our service uh, over the year because this has also given us an opportunity to work on a variety of things uh, that we could not have worked on or would have been more difficult to work on had we been in a, a normal environment. So if there's anything good that has come out of COVID, and I really hesitate to say that, it's that uh, various cities, Forest Grove included, have been able to do projects that they had to put on the shelf because there just wasn't room, there just wasn't time. And because other things can't be done, we are able to uh, do these things that allow us to improve our services. So it, it's, I think that's the silver lining around the dark cloud. Uh, we have lost, we have lost uh, some, some money, but we have been able to also get people to work from home. And we've been able to, in Forest Grove, we've been able to keep people on the payroll and uh, move through that. So it's, uh, it's been tremendously inconvenient, but we have found new ways to, to work around that. So I think that's a, I, I wish I could give some more examples, but uh, right now my, my brain is not working on, 
on all six cylinders. Understood. Have your power company customers been able to pay their bills? Some have and some haven't, and we have indicated that we are not cutting off service for non-payment. We are asking that those people who are experiencing those difficulties come into us and make arrangements or give us an idea. We're also working hand in glove with a community action organization uh, in helping people make payments for uh, not only uh, for all the utilities, and I think that's that's across the county, working with all the cities and in the in Washington County. So uh, we are uh, trying to make funds available to community action for for those kinds of payments. There, you talked about the revenue stream, and you're you know you're you're having difficulties there or minor difficulties. Has the infusion of federal dollars made a difference in Forest Grove? Yeah, a great deal, and the, the coming infusion will help uh, markedly. We will be able to backfill some of those uh, accounts that we did use to help local businesses uh, make, make uh, uh, mortgage payments uh, and to help uh, um, we, we, in other ways. Uh, some of that money also went to, again, like I say, community action to help for utilities. So uh, we can get some of that money back into our, into our coffers to, uh, to replenish that. That's going to be a major part of our budget discussion uh, when we are middle, in the middle of the budget season right now. The fiscal year ends on June 30th, so we're working, working towards that. But uh, the Forest Grove will get $5.2 million, uh, half now and half later. So. Uh, the 2.6 that is coming in uh, this time around will give us an opportunity to, uh, again, like I say, backfill and also look at uh, improving some programs such as our infrastructure, uh, broadband delivery, so on and so forth. That's a critical part of your economy. Bingo, yes, that yeah. is. Because, again, people are going to continue working from home. Um, they're going to see that it can be done and they may continue doing that, so uh, that's going to be a, an integral part of uh, the recovery. Let's talk about your job description for a minute. The forest, the mayor of Forest Grove isn't a full-time position. Not by a long shot. Uh, you preside over the city council meetings, and you have a little bit of executive authority. How has that changed over the course of the pandemic? Uh, the job description hasn't changed, but um, Enacting that job description has changed. I've uh, become more involved uh, not only in um, city issues, obviously, but also regionally. We have, we have a collection of mayors in Washington County that uh, meet on a regular basis. Uh, and because <coughs> of the pandemic, uh, we meet more often. And we meet about issues that are uh, common to all of us. Uh, same, at the same time, we're making, I meet with uh, other mayors across the state, and I meet with a group called the Metropolitan Mayors Consortium, which are a collection of mayors from the area in metropolitan Portland that is within the urban growth boundary of Metro. Um, that group also uh, is trying to deal with uh, making the, the balance between uh, health and well-being and economic development, that is a, a, a crucial balance that we are all concerned about and trying to keep businesses afloat while at the same time keeping people healthy and in some cases alive, uh, that's, that's a crucial uh, I don't want to call it juggling because that might soft sell it a little bit, but it's a it's a crucial balancing act that that all the mayors and other elected officials across the state have to have to work almost 24 hours a day at. So if there's been a change, it's been sometimes it gets it gets more intense than it was before before COVID. Is affordable housing, homelessness, houselessness? The lack of shelter, is that on the agenda for the mayors? Uh, if it wasn't, it, it should be, and it, it is. Uh, 
We are uh, working with uh, Metro on delivering on the, the uh, responsibility of providing homeless services based on the ballot measure that was approved by voters. Uh, we are also working with Metro on the, on the uh, housing, affordable housing project that was passed uh, uh, a year or so ago and putting that money to use uh, building affordable housing across, across the region. That uh, had originally said, we originally felt we could get 3,900 units out of that, that authority. Uh, and now because of a variety of things, we're able to increase that, I think, to almost somewhere in the mid 44,000s, 4,500, something like that. Um, I don't have that figure, but I do know that we are able to marry some money and use some federal funding to get to get the number of housing units up uh, off of that. So, um, yeah, and that again is uh, work that we all have to uh, that the mayors are all working together to make sure that that money is distributed equitably and fairly and. Uh, with the sense towards diversity and equity and inclusion. We don't see a lot of homeless camps in Forest Grove, but there are some. We have, we have two. Um, I know you one, have them. One we're uh, trying to relocate as we, as we speak. Uh, we see more of them in metropolitan Portland right. than we do in Forest Grove. Nonetheless, have we reached a point of critical mass with the homeless and the camps and the, all of the problems that they generate? I don't know. Uh, I have to profess ignorance on that. Um, I know it's an issue, and I know it's not, it's not going away overnight. Uh, in fact, it probably could be getting a little bit worse before it gets better. But again, we are moving, moving that homeless services money out the door as quickly as we can to get, uh, to get people uh, proper shelter and proper care. Uh, and then the, uh, the other monies that uh, we're working on, uh, along with the federal uh, ARP money, we, should, we, we need to use that and use that wisely. This is a situation that we'll probably be able to deal with better once the restrictions for the pandemic are lifted and people are able to interact. But Washington County has been bouncing around between moderate risk, high risk, extreme risk. It looks like we're going to go back into being extreme risk. What kind of an impact is that having on Forest Grove and the economy? Uh, again, it's like being that ping pong ball in that, in that table tennis match. Uh, people are frustrated. Um, we have businesses that, that follow the rules, that do everything they're supposed to be doing. <coughs> Excuse me. And... And they um, feel that because somebody else is not m being observant, uh, they're paying the price. And uh, I guess the, the phrase is, life is unfair. And I'm not dismissing all of that. I, I sympathize and am trying to work on ways to, working on ways to try and get some sort of resolution. But again, it goes back to that balancing act. We have people that uh, are getting sick. Uh, we have to care for them. We have to uh, hopefully ensure that uh, other people won't get sick. And at the same time, we have to protect uh, uh, and in hope, try to work to make sure our businesses stay, stay afloat and that our schools stay open. We've gotten back to the fact that we have we have students coming back to school. I don't want to see that those shut down again because a uh, year of not having kids in school, um, I think is going to have an impact on educational accomplishments down the road and it's not going to be a positive impact. You're a former educator. You yeah, probably afraid so, feel it yeah. acutely, yeah. Well, I, I was in school. I don't know if I taught, but I... <laughs> 
Understood. Yeah. So the balancing act is is basically between services and humanity and the economy. I mean, it, you're really tossing a lot of elements into the air and trying to figure out how to keep them there. Yeah, and that goes back to again what I said. I think our jobs as elected officials have changed significantly over the last 12 months. Yeah. And uh, it's that's not going away. Your so, crystal ball. What do you see? Do we see an end to this very soon? Uh, I don't see. We, we. I don't think we see an end. I think we see um, a, a lessening. I think we are going to get back to not normal. I think normal is there's going to be a new normal. Um, we are once we and people far smarter than me are saying once we get to 75 percent vaccination rate in the state we can probably take our foot off the gas a little bit on uh, on on activities that we have to perform but i think we will still continue practicing social distancing uh, i think uh, hygiene will Will probably be the order of the day. Um, I think we will probably be checking on vaccinations uh, more seriously than perhaps we are now. Um, but I think we're on. We're, we're there's a light at the end of the tunnel, and I don't think it's an oncoming train. City services, the way they're delivered is going to change, has changed from the COVID. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Are we gonna see some of these innovations continue as we go forward? Uh, I think you you have an aha moment where somebody said, okay, we're doing it this way. Uh, I'll go back to the example of working from home, that there are people that are saying, well, now uh, I can do my job from the dining room table or from the family den or, or, or wherever. Um, I'm not looking to have that exclusively, but I am, I am thinking that there are people that are going to say, I could spend two, three days a week at home and two, three days a week at the office doing those things um, and working with, with my colleagues. Um, and that's going to, I think that's going to change uh, the structure of how we do things, not only in, in government, but also in private business. Mm -hmm. uh, and it'll impact, uh, it'll impact traffic. We won't have, uh, we may not have uh, those, we'll have less people on the road maybe if they can figure out they can work at home. You brought traffic up. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you guilty, did. Guilty, guilty, guilty. We tend to think of Forest Grove often as the end of the line in Washington County. Of course, that's far from the case. But Forest Grove's interconnection with Beaverton and Hillsborough is vital to the economy of Washington County. And it's also vital to the county's infrastructure. At the same time, we don't often associate Forest Grove with gridlock and congestion. What role does Forest Grove play in the ongoing discussion about making Washington County's traffic plan more effective and more efficient? Uh, we are in conversation, obviously, with Washington County's Department of Land Use and Transportation. We have a couple of road improvement projects that are on the agenda right now. And for people uh, not in the west end of Washington County, they may not mean very much. But uh, the intersection of Martin Road and Highway 47 is crucial to uh, those people who do commute. And we are putting a roundabout in there. Forest Grove is surrounded by roundabouts. And I can say that fast five times. Um, <laughs> so that we, again, are trying to move traffic uh, and as, as conveniently and as quickly as possible uh, and avoiding those long lines where people are sitting idling their engines. So uh, the roundabouts are helping us helping us do that. So we have, we have two projects like that. We are continuing to look at uh, Highway 47, which we think when the improvements are done, it will be transformational for that particular north-south highway in northwest Oregon. It's becoming more and more of a freight corridor, and it's uh, getting, getting to be important again 
in, in Northwest Oregon. So, um, and then our connection using the TV highway. Uh, we are always uh, interested in anything that can improve it, whether it's uh, in downtown Beaverton or in Aloha or in downtown Hillsboro or on that, that stretch between uh, uh, Hillsboro and Cornelius. We need to get a road that has sidewalks, that is, has better lighting, that has better bus stops, uh, and uh, uh, bus rapid transit lanes uh, to move people. Um, uh, conversation has always been about moving uh, max the six miles from Hillsboro to Forest Grove. That was what I campaigned on in 2020. And in 2000, excuse me, when I first ran for city council, and we saw how successful that's been 21 years later. Uh, we haven't moved one inch of light rail. Um, and, there, and, I, and I understand that because there are other projects uh, that are absolutely huge that, that need to be accomplished. We need to, we need to do something with the Southwest Corridor uh, uh, to, to move that tremendous amount of population uh, efficiently. And, um, and I support those kinds of things. I, I get yelled at occasionally in Forest Grove for ignoring, and it's not so much a fact that I'm ignoring Forest Grove, it's that I'm trying to remember that Forest Grove is part of a greater greater sphere of influence. And if I can help with uh, the Southwest Corridor, maybe some of those mayors can help us with TV Highway and moving it, moving it forward. So the, the Metro Transportation bond issue would have taken care would have would not have, have would taken have, care of it. It would have addressed some would of the have issues on TV uh, Highway. A good portion of that, and uh, we have not given up on on those particular issues. In fact, uh, the 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 program uh, that uh, is being uh, bandied about in Congress on transportation, uh, we would be asking our congressional delegation to include. Uh, a lot of what we're talking about with regard to uh, TV Highway, with regard to 185th Avenue, with regard to Highway 99W, uh, and, and the Southwest Corridor, to, to get those, those also in that, in that federal transportation package because it benefits, it benefits us all. What kind of a role do you see more public transportation taking? I think that gets more automobiles off the road, so that the freight that uh, has to use the road has uh, uh, an ability. I'm always reminded of the story that, and it may be apocryphal, and I might be spreading rumors here, and I apologize <laughs> if I am, but they talk about at Intel, for example, there is a window in which they can get their product to the airport and that window um, is getting smaller and smaller because there's more and more traffic on Highway 26. Um, I can remember rush hour. Uh, I am of an age that rush hour started at maybe 6.30 in the morning and went to 9, and then started again at 3.30 in the afternoon and went to 6. Now it's starting at, in the afternoon. It's starting at 1.30 or 2 and going till 8 o'clock at night. Um, and it's not unusual when I'm coming home from something in Portland and one of those people driving up uh, Canyon Road looking the other way of the traffic coming into Portland and it is backed up past the zoo. And that is uh, uh, when there are trucks in there trying to move freight that, and they're moving two miles an hour, that's not very efficient. A sign of the times yeah. indeed. Recently, there's been, there was, and there still is, some extensive media reporting about an incident involving a Forest Grove family and an off-duty Forest Grove police officer. The family is from the minority community. The officer was apparently under the influence when this incident took place. While when on-duty Forest Grove officers were called to the scene, the off the off-duty officer was told to go home. Now the incident is under investigation by the Washington County Sheriff's Office. Realizing that this is an ongoing investigation, Mr. Mayor, and that you probably aren't able to comment on the incident directly, and we understand that, I have to ask, what does it say about the relationship that Forest Grove police have with the diverse community? My first reaction would be, I think it's, it's good because we do have a number of 
people of color who work with uh, the police on an individual basis, but I think collectively there is a there is a feeling across this country and in 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 Forest Grove, unfortunately, that um, there needs to be that that, that relationship is. Um, I don't want to say fractured, and I don't want to say broken, because I think it can be repaired. But I think there is um, there's a tension there um, that we need to we need to address. And in Forest Grove, I think we're beginning to address that. I can't comment because I don't want to step on anybody's rights of due process. Um, but um, the the image of the police officer in in this country, in, in general, is uh, has, has come under a great deal of scrutiny, and I think justifiably so. I think the uh, uh, image of some elected officials has come under scrutiny, and justifiably so. And um, we need to remember that we are doing doing the the work of the people. And we need to do it correctly, and that applies to that applies to uh, mayors, that applies to councilors, that applies to city staff, that applies to police officers. We all uh, have to remember that what we are doing, we are doing in the broad light of public scrutiny, and uh, uh, what we do reflects upon not only ourselves, but also on uh, our our business as a whole. With uh, they talk about uh, one one bad apple spoils the bunch, but if you let one bad apple sit in there, all of a sudden maybe it's not just one bad apple; it's five or ten, or they start to ferment. Yeah, and that's 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 never good. Yeah, uh, the Oregon House of Representatives passed a whole bunch of bills just today, as or yesterday, as we record this program, uh, regarding police reform and police qualifications and police training. It still has to go through the Senate. It still has to be signed by the governor in order to become law. But it could change the way that Oregon cities select their police officers and train their police officers. Do you think that that's going to have an impact on Forest Grove's police department? Are you still going to be able to attract people to the I, force? I think so, and I think we will be able to attract quality police officers, quality people to be police officers, because uh, more often than not, they're going to say, this is an honorable profession, this is what I want to be, and I will do what it takes to become a good police officer. Uh, maybe I'm Pollyannish on that, but it, it seems to me that there's an opportunity here for uh, to, to have a posture of this profession is one that I want to be a part of and one that I want to to help buff and shine and burnish so that people will say that this is a respectable profession. And so you'll still be able to find people to come to Forest Grove? I think so. Yeah. I think so. Going forward, there are a lot of discussions in smaller Despite cities. Despite the fact they have me as a mayor. I don't think <laughs> Probably plus. There, there have been a lot of discussions that are taking place in smaller cities like Forest Grove about inclusion and diversity and equity in all aspects of life, not just as it deals with the police force. Is Forest Grove having that discussion now? Yes, we are. We are engaged in, we have brought a consultant on board to give staff and, uh, and council um, an opportunity to discuss and develop a diversity education and diversity equity and inclusion program uh, for for the city, and we hope to to move that on out. I think the, the key here is, and my hope is, that we get this training and we work with it, and pretty soon it becomes second nature and we do it without thinking about it. And if we do things that way, and if somebody says, oh, geez, you are really being uh, practicing diversity or you are really being inclusive in Forest Grove, uh, we'll be able to say, well, that's the way we do things um, naturally. Uh, so it's sort of like repeating the same exercise over and over again in basketball practice. Uh, you develop that muscle memory. We want to develop that intellectual, ethical, and moral memory. Washington County is described as Oregon's most diverse county 
through a lot of different ethnic and racial standards. Do you think Forest Grove is becoming more diverse? Yes, and I think it's a good thing because we're getting an opportunity to to be exposed to different cultural aspects which uh, we can benefit from as, as people. Um, we have uh, a, a number of groups that have an impact on Forest Grove, nonprofits such as Adelante Maharas. They have uh, become part and parcel of the community because they sponsor our farmers market, our weekly farmers market during the spring and summer. Uh, we have Central Cultural and Virginia Garcia in, uh, located in Cornelius, uh, headquartered in Cornelius, and they are um, giving us an opportunity for uh, health coverage and for, uh, again, also working with uh, uh, marketing of, of goods and working with, uh, uh, unfortunately, with disadvantaged populations. So, um, those those groups are doing nothing but been, there is no downside to having those groups be involved in Forest Grove and, and Western Washington County. Indeed, agreed. Put your old broadcaster's hat on right now is the forecast for Forest Grove, partly cloudy, sunny, rainy, windy, stormy. Where, where do you see you going in the next year, year and a half? Well, as an old broadcaster who has a face made for radio, it, uh, I think <laughs> we're, we're on the upside. Uh, we are, I, again, we have a good council. We have people who are very concerned about the public good. Uh, we have a staff that is uh, very capable, a uh, city manager that has uh, moved us uh, forward from where we were when he first came on board. And that's not to criticize his predecessor, but it's just to say that uh, we have always been looking for room for improvement and our staff has been uh, crackerjack in doing, uh, doing that kind of work for us. Um, uh, we do have uh, some bumps in the road, and uh, we deal with those and, and, and try and move on. Um, but uh, we have had uh, uh, people that have served the city of Forest Grove that have left us recently. Tom Gamble, our park and rec coordinator, has, le has retired after uh, almost three decades of service. Our fire chief, Michael Kincaid, is retired, and uh, he, he was with us for, I think, 12 years. So uh, we are moving forward. We are changing, uh, but we're also looking at, again, providing those services. And that's the bottom line: is providing services to our to our residents so that they will be glad that they chose to live in Forest Grove. On another issue, do you think the Dodgers can pull it off again this year? Well, I hope so. If, if not the Mariners, then the Dodgers. <laughs> Anybody but those hated San Francisco Giants. Anybody but the Giants. Mayor Truax, it's always a pleasure. It's really been a pleasure to see you in person. We thank you so much for being with us today on City Talk. I've enjoyed it. Thank you very much. I'm Eric Schmidt. We'll see you again next time.